Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Angular Air. I'm your host, Justin Schwarzenberger. And on today's episode, we are going to be checking out NGRX Ducks, uh, diving into dynamic facades for NGRX. So it should be pretty cool. Learn about that. Let's get started. First, we'll say hi to our panelists, and then we'll meet our guests, and then we'll get into the topic. Joining us today, we've got Alyssa. Alyssa, what's going on? Hey, it's so good to be here. Good to have you. Good to have you. We got Austin with us. Austin, what's going on? How's it going, everyone? Doing good. Doing good. Mike, how's it going, Mike? Not too bad. I feel like I want to break out my favorite duck line from a movie for today's <laughs> episode. Well, you have the whole show to, to do it. So All right, I'll, I'll save it. I'll squeeze it in later. All right. All right. Are you going to do like some Darkwing Duck, some Howard <laughs> the Duck? What, what kind of duck? No, no, no. It's it's not it's not duck related. Well, it's duck related, but it's not from a duck movie. All right, all right. Wes, what's going on, Wes? Hey, how's it going? Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Yeah. And our guest today, Greg. Greg, how's it going? Hey, it's good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Stoked to have you on. Why don't you uh, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself so they can know who you are? Okay, maybe Wes, you want to start? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, be happy to. My, yeah, I'm Wes Grimes. Uh, I'm an engineer at Narwhal, and I'm also on the core team of NGRX. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes Grimes, and I'm also sometimes on Twitch at Grimes Wes. So. And uh, I love weather, barbecues, sunsets. You'll find that on my Twitter a lot. And uh, yeah, just here to represent the NGRX team today and just kind of uh, talk about our perspective on libraries and how we love uh, love it when folks build on top of our platform. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, my name is Greg. Uh, I'm a software engineer for 12 years now. I am working for a little company in Germany called CoIT and we do a lot of software consultancy for Angular and .NET projects. And we are also are working in those projects. And uh, beside that, I visit a lot of meetups. I give talks about Angular and TypeScript. And yeah, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is at Greg on that. So yeah, and I'm really excited to be here today um, to talk about a library that I've written for the past year now. And yeah, so it's really cool to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. We're excited to have you and excited to learn more about uh, this library. So you want to uh, tell us a little bit about this? I, I haven't even looked at it yet, so I'm I'm gonna be oh, yeah. surprised here. I'm oh, yeah, yeah. So so I have prepared some slides for it. Um, so basically, in, in very short, NGRX Stacks uh, helps you to uh, yeah write domain driven code uh, with NGRX. Uh, it abstracts a little bit the infrastructure that can be abstracted, and it automates the handling of actions. Uh, to help you, yeah, to get a little bit faster in your development cycle and so on, yeah. And uh, basically, I come to this idea of talking to other engineers. So we uh, did a few Angular projects with NGRX, and we have a few discussions over and over and over again. And then I started thinking of, okay, how can I help people to solve their problems? And NGRX is the result uh, of thinking about those problems. Nice. And, and you mentioned like thinking about it in domains. Is that kind of like domain driven design kind of concept of thinking about it? It's a kind of, yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm a, yeah. So, domain, it's not the whole thing of domain driven design. I think domain driven design is a little bit more, but you can think in uh, contexts and in yeah, specific. Are things you want to put in features, and yeah, so it's kind of related to domain-driven design as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, that'll be a big plus. I think that's definitely something that as you start building out your state, right, whether it's NGRX or whatever, I used to have to start thinking about how you organize those slices of it, right, and, and where it makes sense. Exactly. And then yeah. How does it play across each other as your app grows, right? Yeah, certainly a challenge. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned so, you had some slides. Do you want to? Yeah. 
I, I can, yeah, if I can just yeah, share my screen or something like that, then I can start with it. <laughs> so, or oh, maybe I have to do this on my own. Ah, screen share. Ah, I missed uh, the uh, the button on the left side. All right. <laughs> Sorry, my, <laughs> my, my failure. So, okay, now you should be able to see my screen. And yeah, okay, then let's start it uh, to introduce NGRX DAX. And please feel free to ask me any question or you can interrupt me as you want to. And I just try to uh, respond to, to those questions as far as, as I can. All right, NGRX DAX. So the agenda for today, uh, I want to tell you a little bit uh, about the story behind NGRX DAX, so why I think it's valuable for some teams and after this, I want to introduce the API uh, of NGRX DAX and how you can build a dynamic facade and what a dynamic facade actually is. And after this, uh, I would jump into some live coding session. I prepared a sample for you. And uh, after this first coding session, I have some advanced features of NGRX DAX uh, helping you to deal with effects and uh, selectors as well. And I will also demonstrate those features in a small live coding session. So yeah, story time. Why did I build NGRX DAX? Um, uh, mainly, this is all about uh, maintaining the core building blocks of NGRX DAX. And for me, those uh, building blocks are the actions, the reducer functions, selectors, and effects. And uh, we, in our team, we have lots of review meetings or retrospectives, and we come in a lot of discussions, and one discussion is uh, repeated uh, over and over again. Uh, a team member just said, all right, I just implemented a new action that we need for our brand new feature. And immediately another colleague said, oh, that's very good, but we already have these actions. They just have a slightly different name or they are organized in another state slice. And we have this discussion uh, not only for actions, but also for selectors and effects as well. And our learning from those discussions was that we re-implement features that are already exist. And the reason for this is, um, and this is not about NGRX, this is about uh, the Redux architecture because it's a very decentralized architecture. Uh, it is getting harder and harder to keep track of the decentralized infrastructure of the Redux application. So at some point, you, you are not able anymore to get everything uh, what you have already implemented or a team member of you has uh, implemented right now. And why is this? Um, why it's getting harder, this has something to do with the uh, shape of our state. I just prepared a small uh, yeah, uh, example for this. Um, if you imagine that Redux is a kind of in-memory database for your application, you can uh, slide this into many features. Maybe you have a feature where you organize the supported languages of your application, uh, and maybe you have to deal with some customer data where a customer orders something. Uh, or you have uh, some kind of session state uh, where you deal with the user data, whether the user is logged in or has any uh, specific rights to do something and so on. And those are just three features, right? Um, uh, in enterprise applications, we may have more than 50 features, uh, for example. And now the interesting thing is that one features can consist of many slices. And I have uh, demonstrated it here in this slide. Uh, if you have a user feature, you may want to keep track uh, of the login process of a user. If, if you have a multi-step login, you may have to store some data there. Uh, the same applies to a registration. If you have a multi-step regist registration process in your application, you need to store those data. After a user has logged in, uh, you want to manage uh, the details of the user, the username, or a, a certain, yeah, if, if it's a gold, gold customer or something like that, uh, or you have a specific user menu. And it, it gets even worse. Uh, each of those slices is finally represented uh, by actions, selectors, effects, and reducers. And 
This shows that the complexity of a Redux stores uh, grows tremendously over time because you have those uh, yeah, relations between a feature, a slice, and all of those building blocks. Yeah, so basically the complexity of the code base increases rapidly. And what we also have, and it could be me saying this, that I talk to a team member and say, okay, do you remember all the features that we have already been implemented in the store? And yeah, finally, uh, I myself say this too. So no, I do not really have the idea uh, if we re-implement stuff uh, or if we are fine with our implementation right now. So this was the main problem that we faced in, in our Redux project. And then I start to think of, uh, by the way, I call this on the left side, this is the NGRX sun, <laughs> the building blocks of NGRX. And I just thought about how we can bundle all of those building blocks to have a dynamic uh, API that is easy to use for everyone. Even for those they, they, who are not familiar with the Redux to have a quicker onboarding for them. And this is uh, where NGRX DAX was born. And maybe uh, to clarify why it's called NGRX DAX, uh, it's uh, uh, the DAX pattern has the slightly the name, the, the same name like Redux. So Redux DAX. And uh, this pattern uh, is already a refactoring pattern that is already known in the React world. And you can also look it up on reduxjs.org if you want to. Uh, there you can also find a reference to it. So it's not something that I are, yeah, come up with on my own. I just uh, read through some documentation. And yeah, what is a duck? Um, I think the left side, uh, most of you are familiar with that. This is an NGRX action creator, uh, which was introduced in NGRX 8, where you can specify a type and a specific payload having also a specific type. And on the right side, you can see a duck. And you can see that uh, there are the same building blocks in this action creator. It has a name, of course. Uh, it also has an action type. And in a duck, you just specify it by using an, a decorator. And it also has uh, the payload. So it also specifies a payload. But somehow, we do not cover everything. So the, the action creator of NGRX covers not everything what is inside of a duck. The duck also looks a bit like what we name case reducer. A case reducer is basically a method where you can mutate state, your application state. And on the left side, again, there is the create reducer function having a case reducer with the new NGRX API. And you can also identify all those building blocks of this Kate reducer on the right side of the duck. So you have the state that should be mutated, and you can also pass a payload. And in the method of the duck, actually, this is a case reducer. So the very simple thing to say is a duck is basically the combination of a case reducer and an action creator. And having this kind of our data structure for our yeah, for our NGRX yeah, yeah, for our NGRX store allows us a couple of things uh, where we can simplify or automate uh, some things in our uh, infrastructure. For example, um, this slide shows just a couple of case reducers. So it's a duck family <laughs> if you want to. And you can bundle those uh, ducks inside of a class. So you have a list of ducks. And basically, what this is, if we combine actions with case reducers, what we get, right, a reducer function. So we can automatically generate a reducer function out of a duck structure. This means with NGRX ducks, you do not have to maintain any reducer function anymore. This is automatically generated for you by NGRX ducks. And the API of NGRX ducks looks like the following. You just pass down the class token of your duck class to a helper function called reducer from. 
And from this, you get the, all the reducer function that you can then register in your NGRX store. So the, the main idea of this is this, that you can focus uh, on your mutation lo logic for your store and you do not have to deal with this nested a case reducer or a or reducer function structure. You can just write uh, your mutation logic out of the box. Um, by the way, in the demo, I will just show the plain JavaScript to mutate state, uh, but you can also combine it with NGRX entity or with, with image.js if you want to. All right, it's completely independent from this. And now the second step is if we have a bunch of ducks inside of a class, then we can use our Angular infrastructure actually to provide this as a service to our components. So we have one data structure combining action creator, reducer and uh, reducer and case reducer. And we can also annotate this within our decorator called Duxify. And Duxify uh, yeah, does some uh, code transformation for us, building the dynamic facade. And it also has some declarations where we can for example, provide uh, the initial state of a certain state slice. We will see this also in the demo a little bit uh, in just a few minutes. Yeah, so, and this is a process how you can uh, instrument NGRX ducks. You can pass in a class containing these duck structures and the Duxify decorator produces a facade. It connects the facade automatically with a store. So you do not have to deal with a store API actually, if you do not want to. And then it auto also registers the facade as a service. Uh, so, and though it can be consumed by each component in your application. And you can also see here in the slide, you pass in a class counter and what you get from it is a duck of counter. What this means, or uh, I come to this a little bit later in the demo, basically the code transformation uh, allows you to directly dispatch actions by just calling simple functions. And that's why the typing of uh, the facade has to be adjusted a little bit. And we are able to do this just using a generic for it. Um, and you will see it uh, just in a few moments in the demo. Yeah. This is how you can use a duck service. Um, you need to have this uh, inject decorator uh, of Angular core. Um, then you can pass in the, the type token of the duck class. And then you can see that you get uh, a duck of counter back from it. And this is basically the setup for, for NGRX ducks so far. And now the interesting thing comes that when you want to instrument or if you want to dispatch an action to the store, you do not have to uh, call this dot store dispatch and pass the action creator to it. You can simply just call the method um, increment by, for example, of the duck, and this will automatically dispatch the action for you because the duck contains all the, the information that it needs to produce an action and to call the, the specific case reducer for it. Um, that's why it's totally yeah, automated for you and you can just work with plain methods. And yeah, and here's just uh, to have a reference to the classic NGRX, um, instead of having the stack, you could also do something like the store dispatch increment by and passing the payload. Yeah, and this is what we um, yeah, talked about uh, in the first minutes of this session here, uh, that the NGRX DAX allows you to be a little bit more domain specific. You can uh, yeah, give uh, a certain uh, name for a method and you can des describe what happens in that method uh, or in that method name. And it feels uh, a little bit, um, for me, just a little bit more natural to have this plain style. And here you can also see, even if you have a new colleague in your team that is not familiar with uh, yeah, NGRX or with Redux, uh, a lot of uh, developers know how to consume a service uh, in Angular. And so you have just a typed API that everyone can use in your team. Can I make a quick comment yeah. on that? 
Go back. Yes, of uh, course, of course. What I like about this is there's kind of like a hidden benefit here, right? If we think about it and we think like, if we're investigating this code and let's say we have this store dispatch, right? And we're dispatching a new action. Well, if I needed to debug that, or if I'm a new team member and needs to come on and look at that, I've got to drill into the action that's getting handed to the dispatch. And then I've got to probably trace through where that um, action type is being used to find the reducer logic and go through several mm -hmm. steps to get through the code, right? Whereas I can see right now, if I go to this.counter.incrementBy and I navigate to that method, that method's going to have that reducer code in it. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. So uh, like, it's, it's, that's like, totally correct. So if you have any problems or any, any trouble, um, and if you just hit or yeah, go to this method declaration, the debugger will also stop right in that method. Yeah, that's correct. So I get like kind of instant one step discovery, one dig down just one level deep and I'll find more answers that I need. So it's, it's surfacing more of that stuff for me from a navigation standpoint as a developer to debug, to learn about it. So that that's pretty slick. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's totally right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, just as a summary, a duck just allows you to dispatch an action by using a simple function. And we know this concept already. So there are all those concepts about facades. And uh, for, until now, a lot of those concepts coming with additional code generation. And with NGRX Ducks, you do not to have any code generation. You just uh, code your, yeah, implement your code one time, and uh, the Duck will just uh, automate all the processes behind the scenes for you. Hey, Greg, I got one more thing. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> the other thing that's really cool about that with the facade that's getting injected is it it declares the API of how you intend that state to be used, right? The, the actions to be dispatched. So counter is mm -hmm. going to have a set. A, a methods on it, right? And so a user that's consuming that will be able to go counter dot and only see the actions that are relevant to, to call off of it. Exactly. So now you don't need this like, well, what action do I call? What do I dispatch? I don't know because there's no clear guidance. This gives like a, a structured API to it, which is really nice too. Yeah, that, exactly, yeah. And you can also discover everything that has been already implemented by other developers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah then i just wanted to inter uh, yeah just to pull in a duck image <laughs> okay and now i just want to show you uh this uh in action and what you can see i ho hopefully you can see the uh, code editor and uh the chrome instance hopefully yep Let's yeah see. okay fine fine so you can see on the right side i have a simple counter and I just want to demonstrate how you can set up a duck uh, right now. And here on the left side, um, I have this directory structure and inside of the store uh, directory, I yeah, just uh, collect all the features and there's one feature called counter and I already created a file counter duck for it. And I want to go in it. And as you can see, I already brought in the uh, decorator duxify and I already said, okay, the state are, uh, yeah, is also typed and it has a count and you can also say, uh, okay, this counter is already initializing or it's loading. And now we can just add our different actions to it. I prepared a few snippets uh, to be a little bit quicker uh, to go through because you already know the API right now. Um, this is uh, the duck that I am bringing in. Um, there is the decorator you can import from the NGRX ducks library. And as you can see, their method signature is the same like uh, you have in uh, a reducer function, right? You have the application state uh, the, so, or the state of the feature, and then you have the payload here that you can deal with. And uh, ducks does not require you to bring in the action because the action, this is already done for you. Uh, you do not have to uh, determine which action type it is uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, this comes with a, a duck pattern so far. And then you also have to return the state. And now I just increment the counter. And I think I also have a second action for it. Uh, it's just the counterpart to decrement the value. So it's pretty much the same. And this is everything you need. And now you can register this to the NGX store. And this is also simple. Um, I just switch to the file where I yeah, declare the feature. 
And here I have already prepared uh, the state interface for the feature. I just uncomment that. So I just have uh, in that feature a slice called simple. So it's a simple counter. It's of type counter state. And inside here, I just did a little bit setup to have um, yeah, the reducer set up ready for AOT compilation. And now I just bring in the reducer and therefore I need the help of function reducer from, and now I pass in the counter here. And now I am done. Uh, so now the reducer of the counter duck is registered in our, our application and we can already check this. When I bring up the Redux tools and go to state, you can see that uh, the initial state of the duck is already has already been initialized. Uh, question for you, Greg. Yeah. <clears throat> so do you still have to worry about immutability with the state that you return with these new um, ducks? Yes, you, you have to deal uh, or you have to worry about this. So ducks does not um, yeah, uh, uh, enforces immutability. Um, it's not the scope of NGX DAX, so you can use other libraries like uh, immutable JS, NGX entity, or ImmoJS to yeah. enforce immutability. Yeah, and you can also activate the new NGX feature of the store where you can say, okay, uh, your store is not immutable anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah the strict yeah, immutability exactly. checks. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just curious. Can you go back to the counter duck? Page. Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we just need to use the spread operator the same way it would be as yeah. a switch statement or an yeah, on. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Cool. Okay. I have one comment to here as well. Mm -hmm. If that's okay. Uh, so in this screen right, right here with the action, the other thing that comes to my mind here is that if I want to unit test and confirm that like I could dispatch an action and the state is going to change in a certain way. Like here, I would just be instantiating this counter, counter class and then just calling increment by and, and asserting that that behaved the way I expected it to, right? And then I'm not really having to worry about instantiating the action. Like everything I need to do to just set up the, the unit testing for regular type of NGRX, you know, procedure, right? Um, this this kind of this simple. A little bit yeah, more. this yeah, this is uh, this is a good question. Yeah, um, I built as I built NGX DAX. Um, one requirement was if you just need an instance of counter that this should work, because the action decorator does some annotation stuff. Um, but if you want to unit test the stack, you can just write new counter and call the act uh, the 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 method on it, and then you can check if the mutation logic is correct. Yeah. Cool. Kind of seeing all these things that kind of help a lot with the productivity that has been established mm -hmm. by, by providing this library. It's not just the setup and everything, but it's all these other additional little pieces that add to uh, our time saving and, and ability to manage code over time, which is really cool. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. The, the decoupling of a typical reducer file um, that you essentially need the action name as well when calling that uh, to be able to discern which action you want to test in your test just by, and then here you have the individual methods directly uh, to be able to call, I like that. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, so uh, then I want to show you how you can introduce the duck into the component. Uh, this is where the fun starts. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have the counter component here. This is a representation what you can see on the right. And I have also a snippet for injecting ducks. Um, and here you can just uh, pass in the counter type token, give this a name, and then you have to import all the needed uh, dependencies for it. And uh, the first thing that I want to do is to implement the increment and decrement feature. And therefore, now I can just use the counter class or facade. And now you can see that I have uh, three methods, actually. I will talk about the third a little bit later on. And now I just want to increment something. And I want now, OK, I just want to increment the counter by one. And there are a certain few things to, to mention. You see that the method name is the same, but the method signature has changed. So if I go back to the counter duck, you see increment by has a state and a payload. 
but the facade just requires you to pass in the payload of number. And this is the thing that the code transformation of NGRX DAX does. And this is also the thing why uh, I require to have you this stack of counter here to have this nice type information. And we can do the same for decrement, oh, sorry, counter decrement by, and this is also, also the same. And there is also a lot of flexibility and we are able to yeah, uh, have this flexibility since TypeScript 2.8 when conditional types were introduced. I just do a few changes here. Maybe I just say already, all right, this is a string. And then you immediately get the feedback of a TypeScript compiler. All right, this is not correct. So, and now it requires you to be a string. Um, but the method here, decrement by, it is not, it's not affected by the typing. It remains to be of, of type number. And this feature is all, only possible if you have this conditional types of TypeScript. And another thing is if I just get rid of the whole payload, the conditional type will automatically say, okay, you have too many arguments uh, passed in this method. It's just a plain method uh, expecting you to pass no uh, payload at all. So yeah, thanks to the TypeScript team <laughs> to making uh, those uh, APIs possible <laughs> with uh, conditional types. Okay. And if we now check back with our application, uh, we do not see that in the, uh, in the application right now, but you can see that the actions are dispatched and these are just plain uh, Redux uh, actions that are dispatched to the store and also recognized by the store DevTools. What's now interesting uh, it would be, okay, how can we select data from from the store, right? Because now we cannot see anything. And uh, we could uh, now introduce the store service and do this store pipe select thing. But uh, we also have a feature in NGX Stacks helping us with it. And the good news is that you do not have to learn something new actually, because as you can see, I have prepared some selectors. So NGRX Ducks. Uh, really only act as a thin layer on top of NGRX and reuses the building blocks of NGRX. And I just uh, yeah, uncommand those selectors here. And I just go back to the slides to show you how you can instrument selectors with NGRX ducks. So there is <laughs> a really simple helper. Uh, you can enhance your uh, DAC class or your DAC service uh, using a method called bind selector group. And what bind selector group does is it just takes the memorized uh, selectors and turns them automatically into consumable observables for your component. So what you then have to do is just yeah have this uh, duck injected, and then you can assign whatever observable you want to have, uh, and you just can pass in the selector. And we will see in the demo later on that current count is not a selector anymore. It's an observable uh, providing you a number. And this is a really cool thing because for now, if you have in greater Redux or NGX projects, you have lots and lots of selectors. And with this pattern, you can write your selectors. And as you have written your selector, it's automatically present in your duck. Um, yeah, that's a really cool thing, I think. And in this slide, you can see yeah, the yeah, different uh, yeah, perspectives of a DAC. So if a component, from a component's perspective, if you consume a DAC service, uh, it only sees these, what we call self-dispatching actions. Uh, these are the methods that are automatically dispatch an action and observables that are the selectors that automatically are transfer, uh, transformed into an observable for you. Yeah, so let's, just check this out and go to the duck. And now I just say select. It, you can give any property name that you want to. 
And now you can use bind selector group. It's also part of NGX DAX. And then you just need to have the selectors uh, imported, I think. Uh, yeah, I have also a snippet for that. And yeah, so this is the most simple thing that you can do, just importing every selector. Oh, sorry. Ah, OK, it's just reordered automatically. You can just pull in any selector of the file, but you would be also able to uh, just do your own projection. You could say, all right, I just want to have count uh, or counter, and then you can se select uh, something like that. So you can you can build uh, different projections for your selectors in your DAC if you want to. Most of the time, I just need to use this, and then I'm fine. Uh, yeah, and now back in the counter component, um, here are both observables that I need for the counter. I now go, go ahead and say this dot counter select current count. And I can do the same for this loading state. And if we now reload, we should be able to select or see that the value increments and decrements. Yeah. I think, so for me personally, I think the, the feature with the selectors is what I love the most about uh, the DAX library. And uh, I've introduced this feature in the most recent ver version of NGX DAX because it helps me a lot uh, to scale out um, the, uh, yeah, the code of the DAX and having this ready. So then because you were doing that uh, import of all those selectors that you wrote in that other mm -hmm. file, you still have the ability to make um, like um, selectors that are a combination of of data. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. There as well, right. So you still have all that capability. Just expose yeah. to the, the facade. Then at that point. Yeah, exactly. You can do what any whatever you want here in the selectors. Uh, compose data, build your aggregates, and so on. And then you can just re yeah pass this through the duck, and the duck just produces observable for you. But one more question, Greg, mm -hmm. if you have, maybe this is jumping ahead, but if you have like two different features and you need to pull those together in, in some kind of combined selector, sort of going off of what Justin was saying, how would you do that? Um, mm -hmm. Is there a concept of like a root selector level um, in docs or uh, would you uh, for, just- Yeah, so for now, I. Do not do this in DAX. I really just use the selector API for it. I would bring in a selector here. Uh, and I just can do something like uh, so. Uh, other selectors. Okay. And then I would do it in the, uh, on the selector level. I did not sort uh, thought for now of some kind of a read selector or something like this. Because sure. uh, for, for, for now, I think NGRX, DAX, uh, NGRX itself brings everything I need to do this. Right, right. OK, yeah, uh, yeah just curious. Because yeah. that's yeah, a common but, one. But, you, you, might yeah. have like, um, mm -hmm. you might have like posts and comments in two different slices, and maybe you want to marry those together, you know, uh, yeah. like mm -hmm. posts with comments or something like that. Yeah. So um, if, if there is any uh, or idea for an API that is uh, more comprehensible, uh, I have no problems introducing this API. Um, I also collect all the ideas I have about NGX ducks on GitHub. So yeah, every feedback on this is uh, really appreciated. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Could, okay. you ducks, could you duxify a class that doesn't have any actions and just use it for the selectors? Or does it kind of tie into a reducer at that point? Oh, yeah. so, so for now, it, this is not possible uh, because um, there is a check uh, if you have annotated actions in it. And if um, a method is not annotated, uh, you will get an error from the library because I want to uh, restrict the usage of the duck. I do not want that uh, any other uh, method could be introduced here having some state or something like this. That's why I am a little bit strict in this point. But what you can do is reuse this bind selector group, for instance, because this is just a higher order function um, that requires you to have an instance of a store. 
So you could just use NGRX DAX, bring in bind selector group, and then you just need to pass an instance as a higher order function here, and then you uh, then this would work for you as well. Cool. Yeah. Are you so. able to use in, like parts of NGRX? Like, let's say you had a root selector, and maybe you just wanted to use that from vanilla NGRX along with Ducks. Does that work? Yeah, <laughs> this works too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if we. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. This this is uh, yeah. Uh, this works. Um, and this is uh, another method that you have maybe recognized before. There is a method pick on a duck. <laughs> a duck can pick, and you can uh, pass. <laughs> you can pass in any memorized selector from whenever wherever you want, and then this is just a facade for a store pipe select, and then you can pass in the selector here, and yeah, you can do this. For example, I just uh, imported the 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 selector, the plane selector. And if you check this right here, you will see that this and this that this is an observable of number. Yeah, cool. you can totally do this. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. So. So those to dos are done for now, and now we have just one little problem in our application: that this this initializing uh, yeah, uh, indicator does not disappear, and I just added this to show you a little bit how you can use NGRX stacks with effects. And for this, I just want to go to the slides one more time. Um, basically, and I think that was mentioned in a prior uh, episode of Angular Air, there was uh, the, uh, the term of initiators. So you have actions that are uh, are part of reducer functions, but you have also actions that only are used to trigger some asynchronous operations. And NGRX DAX also allows you to have those actions. You can add, uh, yeah, with a little helper function, an action creator uh, to your DAC, um, and then you can dispatch an action by just having this property here, right? And yeah, and then you can just uh, listen to this action in your effect, and then you can deal with this action right there. So how is this done in the effect? The, ah, okay, just here is how you would um, yeah, dispatch the action to the store. And here's something that I am, yeah, I, there is a discussion ongoing. If I change the API here, maybe in the next major release, you see that if you have an initiating an initiating action that you have the set property and then you need to call the dispatch method on it the main idea was to have to to have uh, to show the difference between an action that has a reducer and those actions that are just triggering asynchronous operations and that's why this api is different from uh, yeah from the other actions or the methods that are decorated with an action decorator but as I use this library, I found out that uh, this confuses uh, other, other users, uh, starting with NGX stats. And that's why I'm now thinking of changing this API a little bit uh, to make it more convenient to others. But for now, if you want to trigger an, an effect, you need to call the dispatch method. And as you can see, the dispatch method is also strictly typed. Um, here is the usage in effect itself. You also have to inject this uh, duck service. And now you see that the duck service is really like a hub. You have a specific context that you want to deal with, and then you just inject the duck, and they, then you have everything ready. And you can also uh, just rely on the action stream of NGRX. And NGRX ducks just uh, pulls in another operator where you can filter types. And yeah, there you just need to yeah, provide the property name of it, and then this uh, yeah, action is filtered properly, and you have the same uh, typing information given like NGRX does. So why did I choose to have an own operator? This is just uh, because NGRX stacks uh, uh, exists a little bit longer than NGRX 8, and 
since we now have an NGX8, these cool new action creators and an enhanced type system, I plan to reuse the type system of NGRX and to get rid of this bare type operator. It was just needed in prior versions of NGRX, but now I think it would not be needed in the future. So yeah, first step is to inject, then you can filter an action. And finally, you can uh, just uh, return an action. And since effects dispatch the yielded actions on their own, you do not want to call the method uh, itself, you uh, but you can just call the action creator of this method. If you just say dot action, you just get the plain action object that you already know. Yeah. So you have different ways how you can instrument uh, the API of NGX stacks in this case. But I think this API, this will, will be a little bit clearer if I just jump to the demo right now. Okay, I will start with bringing in this uh, initiator. I'm not sure if I have, oh right, yeah, there is a snippet for it. And by the way, you see this generic type operator here. Um, if you set this type operator, then the action creator will require you to dispatch the action with a number. And if you just leave it out, um, then you have an action creator without any needed uh, payload. And in our component, we can go now ahead and say this dot counter dot set. Oh, sorry dot dispatch, and you can also see it's strictly typed, and we can just initialize our counter with 24. And I just forgot one thing. Um, I need to have a success action for it. I think I have this ready as well. Um, yeah. And there is a comma missing, okay. So yeah, what this action just does is to take the payload and then uh, set the is loading property to false. So nothing special about this here. So if we can go now to the effect, we can uh, filter uh, everything as we need it by just bring in this rare type operator. And once again, we just use the uh, counter facade here and say, all right, if set is dispatched, then I want to do something. I add a little delay here just for uh, testing purposes. And finally, I want to map uh, just, oh, okay. I see there is a wrong import, sorry for that. So, and then I need the map operator too. And I just bring in the action here. And now I can say, all right, please counter, give me the set success action. And as mentioned before, if I would call the method directly, we would have, uh, yeah, then the duck would dispatch uh, the action on its own, but this is um, not what we want in an effect. And that's why we have this action method here, which is also strictly typed, and it requires us to add a number as pay payload. And just so, and now we go ahead. And as you can see, the red type operator behaves like you know it also from NGRX. It extracts the payload type and you automatically get, get the right shape of the action. Um, that's why you could also do something like a little bit of destructuring here and pull out the payload directly, and this simplifies the code a little bit. Okay. And. Make sure you take off the dispatch faults. Right. Yeah, there is a to do. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for sure. it. <laughs> you bet, man. Yeah. <laughs> So, and now it's working, yeah. Yeah, so and now we can get rid of the to-dos here and the counter is working as you are already know it from other counter applications, of course, yeah. Yeah, so basically this is it. So 
this is API of NGX DAX, and we use it in quite a few projects right now. Um, it's internally used at CoIT and maintained by us. So yeah, and we find it quite uh, helpful for, for us to so, you know, play with it. I had a question from somebody that was listening live, mm -hmm. um, Greg, and they said, how would you update the same portion of the state with a different action? Uh, that was oh, the yeah, first, a good question. first question. Yeah. And then the second question was, um, the concept of reusing more of a statement, reusing actions in multiple places, as opposed to having specific, um, you know, event type actions. Um, you know, how does how does that play into NGRX docs? Okay, I do not. Uh, I think I did not get the second question, but I will start with the first question. <laughs> That's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first question. Uh, would be, yeah, so uh, NGX Dux would require you to extract the case reducer into another function, and then you would just, uh, yeah, uh, call this function uh, from this other uh, methods. Yeah, so this would be the way how you can uh, okay. re reuse the logic for different uh, action types. I did not found any other way to do this because there is now a strict one-to-one -one relation between an action type and the method name. Um, if there are any other ideas um, how to build up this um, uh, API, um, I think there is actually an API proposal in, in NGX DAX. It's called flattened DAX. Um, but I think that I do not want to implement this because uh, the API is a little bit fuzzy. Um, this decorated API is a little bit more convenient, I think. Yeah, can you repeat the second question? Yeah, please? I think it was yeah. more of a, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yes. I think it was more of a, a statement of the whole concept, you know, Mike Ryan kind of brought this up, uh, I think it was two years ago at NGConf, this concept of good action hygiene. And mm -hmm. how your actions um, really should be events, distinct events that happen in your application. So, for example, maybe um, you have a login form, and the action the action is really defined as login form. You know, click on login. Ah, uh, yeah. Submit login. All, um, all right. Yeah. Also, a really good question. Yeah. So, of course, you can totally do this by the API right now. Um, but if you go a little bit ad advanced, you, um, you end up with a longer action name. So this is, of course, just a demo. But in real in reality, you may have uh, those actions here. And then you also have something like, OK, this is related to the API, or it's coming from the, uh, the counter client app, for example. Right. And this is something that I also recognize, and I try to uh, provide a better a helper for, uh, yeah, to to have a helper to define scopes and so on. There is also a proposal uh, on GitHub in one issue where I describe how, how I want to solve it. Uh, I want to, uh, for example, I want to have something like uh, defining not only one effect, but a whole effect group. And for this effect group, I want to be able to specify a certain prefix. So a prefix is, for example, something like that with API. Mm -hmm. um, and that each action name can also have an own scope. So I, uh, this is the idea behind this, to automate uh, this process a little bit and stops you from repeating yourself over and over again by typing all those uh, additional information to the action types. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess if you compare and contrasted using NGRX docs to vanilla NGRX and kind of, uh, there's two different, there's the economy because with, with the, your approach, it, it seems to be more command driven where mm -hmm. there's yeah, right. these, these setters that are being done to state and very specific state-based actions versus, you know, kind of what we push in NGRX world is more of, these uh, events, these UI events or API return events that drive mm -hmm. state. And so there is some of the, I mean, the benefit of what uh, you're showing is it's a lot easier for uh, new developers to come in and immediately see what, like you said in your story, what is the features that have been implemented? They can get a mental model better. Um, 
But the contrast to that is you might lose some flexibility in having like maybe a one action yeah. that's an event action that might drive multiple updates to state. So yeah. Um, yeah, there's also, I already had a use case where NGRX stacks would not help you for now. Um, I now have the requirement to do something like offline first development. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did need, or I needed to uh, provide metadata to an action. And the uh, API of NGRX stacks does not allow you for now to provide additional metadata. So if you want to have something like this, NGX stacks are, is not the right tool for you right now. Uh, um, but the cool thing is that you can introduce a duck where you need to, and you can just uh, yeah, jump between uh, NGRX and NGRX stacks if you want to. So we have this in our project right now. And what I plan to do in the next release is really to reuse the type, the, the existing types of NGRX in NGRX stacks to have an even better interoperability uh, between yeah. both of those. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I, I love what you're doing just from, you know, it's great to see libraries being built on top of NGRX as a platform as opposed to NGRX just being the end all be all. And so this is really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, it also took me a while to get my head around this topic. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. Finally, but finally, it it uh, yeah was a good idea to do this. <laughs> so yeah, I just have a, a few last uh, slides. So if you want to give NGX Dax a try, you can install it from npm. It's available as an npm package. If you have any questions, requirements, concerns about this, you can or just send me a tweet or a direct message on Twitter. And yeah, I would just to sum up what we have seen so far. So basically, a duck is a dynamic facade uh, that can be injected into a component without having any additional uh, code completion. And you can compose the read side and the write side of uh, the Redux architecture. So the right side uh, are those actions, read side the selectors, and you can use just a dynamically typed facade for it. And yeah, it also automatically generates the action creators and reducer functions for you. And, oh yeah, and that's also another thing. Our NGX stacks already ships with schematics. So if you have a, a little bit of, uh, if you want to generate a new duck, you can just uh, yeah, write, uh, yeah, create, generate a new duck, giving the path for it, and then you can just go ahead and create a new duck. Uh, yeah, so maybe, so we have a little time left. That's why I'll just bring up the integrated terminal. So um, there you can, for example, say ng generate at go it ngrx stack stack, and then inside of I think it was counter store uh, advanced. We want just to build up an advanced counter. Uh, then the uh, schematic will ask you if you want to create a barrel file, if you want to have effects, if you want to create a selector, and then it automatically generates everything for you. And it also automatically updates the module file for you, and it automatically registers the new effect service for you in the module as well. So this is everything that you can get from the NGX library so far, NGX Dux library so far, sorry. Yeah, so there's a uh, yeah. is there an mm -hmm. ng add schematic for that so we could add the library via ng add? <laughs> uh, not, not for now, but okay. uh, I, ex I am accepting PRs <laughs> on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's also one a community member. Uh, his name is Thomas Skelnick. He uh, uh, have written the schematics for NGX Ducks. So, you, a huge shout out to him. Uh, the, the cool uh, logo of NGX Ducks was created and designed by Sasha Nuisel. And the mind behind this idea of NGX Ducks, uh, this is uh, a developer named Marcel Hoyer. And he's a friend of mine. He's also living here in Leipzig, Germany. And he is really, uh, yeah, uh, one of the best developers I know. And everything I, every time I talk to him, uh, I'm getting new inspiration, new ideas. 
are, yeah, without Marcel, this all library would not exist. And also thanks, Wes, uh, you have also, yeah, uh, reviewed my slides and so on. So yeah, a big thanks uh, to you as well for helping me out on that. It was a pleasure. Yeah, so yeah, this is everything I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Very awesome, very awesome. Nice job. Yeah. All right. All right, wow, that was a cool library. Looking forward to checking that thing out for sure. Uh, I can see how all, the, all the benefits of um, speeding up that development process and keeping track of that stuff. I think that's one of the biggest challenges, right? When you're dealing with state is, is the mental, the mind map that you've got to keep in play of now, how do these things like you can't, it's harder to trace that code through, right? Cause now you got to keep track of that, how these things play out together. So um, yeah, this definitely can be a big help. Very cool. Very cool. All right. That's uh gives us some quick picks and then we'll uh, wrap it up. If anybody has any picks, I didn't check ahead of time. So maybe we don't have picks this week. I don't know, but uh, anybody got anything? No, no. Sorry, sorry, I don't have any I'll, picks. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, do a, uh, I'll, I'll do a pick. <laughs> Mine's a little bit of a sellout or, or biased pick, but I think you should follow uh, Narwhal Connect. Um, because Actually, I, I think you should, regardless of whether I work there or not. Um, because uh, there's some really good recipes on there that are curated uh, for, you know, um, different angular things that you might need to accomplish in X related uh, CLI recipes. There's some schematic stuff. And so if you follow uh, at Narwhal Connect, um, you'll get information. It's free. Um, and uh, tomorrow um, we'll be doing a live stream with uh, Brandon, myself, and um, Zach DeRose uh, talking more about NGRX. So nice, good pick. Cool. Good. I I I have a pick. I just <laughs> I just remembered. <laughs> there is a really cool project, and uh, it's it's called Meta UI. And Meta UI introduces some kind. It's called Object Style Sheet, uh, which allows you to dynamically uh, produce uh, forms in Angular, but also whole applications just by a descriptive language. And this is uh, open source by SAP, by the SAP group. And I think, yeah, this is a really huge project. And uh, yeah, I just try to uh, play with it a little bit around and it's a really cool thing. Yeah, maybe you want to check this out as well. Nice, nice. Sounds like a good pick too. <laughs> All right, well, that's a wrap. Uh, Wes, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you coming on. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be be here. Awesome, awesome. And Greg, thank you so much for uh, taking your time to share this content with us. Uh, also, for all the work you put into NGRX Ducks and everybody that you thanked as well for that. Uh, thank you a ton. This looks awesome. We really appreciate you sharing your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey. <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right, everyone. Have a good one. We actually have a double feature today. So we have another show in about uh, four hours or so. So check back. If you want to catch that one, it's going to be on Angular Routing. It should be pretty cool. All right. Have a good one. See you next time. Later. Okay. See you. Bye. Peace out.